Hey everybody, welcome to the UJ Sports Live podcast. My name is Roddy Nabulsi. I'm joined by Dane Young and former Georgia Bulldogs Hall of Fame coach Jim Donna. Not former that he's in the Hall of Fame, he's former Georgia coach. I need to say that a little more correctly. I don't want to say that he's been like in the Hall of Fame and then out again, but he's uh he's with us today and we're gonna break down Georgia's signing class. Normally we do this show Tuesdays at noon, but Coach, again, being the uh, the quarterback of their show, said, hey, why don't we do it uh, Wednesday night where we could talk about all the kids that came in instead of trying to predict what would happen on Tuesday. And uh, I really want the coach's take on all this because this is a hell of a class. Georgia right now is sitting at number two in the recruiting rankings behind Alabama by a fraction of a percentage. I mean, it's just a – it's as close as you can get. And we still have, you know, until February 2nd. So we'll see some uh, stuff going down there. The dogs pick up a big five-star today. And it is just an absolutely loaded class. You've got to be thrilled if you're a Georgia fan. Kirby Smart pulls off one of the best classes he's ever had. And we're going to talk about it. First, I want to mention our friends, though, at Academy Brewing Company, uh, Dead Soxy, Your Pie, and Athens Ford. They are sponsors of our show, and we'll talk about them later on. But, Coach, give me your overall impressions of this uh, class. So, at this point, though, we the, the kid from Tennessee he hasn't signed, and – uh, so he, once he signs, then that'll add to our count, right? And then earn well, screen. Like, they count the first twenty signees. Oh, okay. Is that so the way your, your top high? Your top twenty highest guys. So, so when you get like a Chris Miller or something like that, then you might move up a little bit. Well, what's what's that kid? See, not that high, right? He's four. Uh, he he is a four star, but you have to be a high four star to really break out because Georgia has so many good. Uh, what about Green? What's he rated? I'm not sure where he's going to be on there in that list. He's checking you out here. Let's get going here. Hey, okay. He does. Okay. So I was just saying, you're, you got hey, to you're, 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 you're talking about a real infinitesimal. I mean, it's a really good situation, but, you know, I don't think I've ever been. I mean, I know I've never been around a secondary class like this one. Uh, it's just as far as length and skill and size and everything. And in the end, it kind of bit us in the foot because Kamari Wilson. And uh, Killebrew just didn't want to come in and compete against those guys. I mean, and you, you can't blame them. So you lose guys. But, uh, and, you know, the kid had his uh, ACL and that, that, that happened. But the general tendency, every time I've ever done one of these deals, and I used to do them after every uh, meet, meet in the butt smear or meet at Marshall or Oklahoma. And boy, you know, you just fired up. And as soon as you go down there, it's on your ass about who you lost. I mean, <laughs> what can you do about these people? So, you know, we're going to talk about it tonight, but I, I, I feel like that this was just uh, a tremendous class, a very good uh, situation. I had a, a uh, chance to be over there Saturday when uh, a lot of those kids were here and, and I got to meet a couple of them and talk to them and just so impressed with their, uh, their the way they acted, the way they're, their manners. I mean, I mean, these guys are are class kids. I'm I'm talking about uh, C.J. Washington. I mean, I'm telling you now, C.J. Washington. I don't know if he looks better than Nick Chubb, but he looks as good as Nick Chubb right now. Michael Williams and uh, and the kid uh, Marvin Jones, both. Uh, Roddy saw the picture that I sent, both at least a head taller than me, maybe even that. It couldn't be nicer. Uh, just fired up about coming to Georgia. You just don't – I can't get this across fans that are listening. Please listen to me. These kids want to be – they weren't talked into coming here. They want to be a part of this program. They know what is happening here. They see the potential here, and they know what Kirby's building in his six years. So uh, – we can go over a lot of stuff and we're going to, people are going to, uh, you know, say what they want to, but uh, man, oh man, the uh, offensive line, there weren't as many studs as usual, but we got guys that are going to be become players and everybody's not a five star. Look at uh, what, what happened with, with uh, Davis, you know, when he was here. And uh, so I think just the overview for me is that, boy, we're in a good place right now. We're in a very good place. Our kids are going to compete in this game. And uh, now we got the prophet of doom coming on there. 
Blaine Gilmore is going to tell us everything's wrong with everything. But no, hey, Blaine's a good man. He did a good job on all that stuff and helped me out because I didn't know anything about recruiting. I just watched what he said. But let, let me just tell you again, Georgia Bulldogs, a national brand. I mean, you can walk in anywhere in the country. And here's the thing that I would tell any recruit. Let's just pretend I'm going in Dane Young's house right now, and he's a kid from down here in South Georgia. And I'll say, Dane, let me just ask you one thing. When you walk down the hall and you start talking to the kids, ask who's recruiting you, what's the school you tell them first? Yeah. Answer, Dane. I mean, from where I'm from, that's going to be Georgia. That's what I'm talking about, man. You go in any kids and you tell them that. And that's what they want to hear. Hey, they're just totally consumed with Georgia. There's a few guys you don't get, but you know how much I worry about the guys you don't get? I hope y'all got some water. Everybody in your house, go get a, a bottle of water and pour it through your hands and see <laughs> how long it takes to hit the ground. That's how long I'm going to worry about Kamari Wilson. That's how long I'm going to worry about Killebrew. That's all, how long I'm going to worry about James. It's over with. James has been committed to Florida forever. You can't turn around. Every, hey, how about Everett coming in here? How about uh, some of these, uh, these receivers coming in there? Thank you, you Dan right. Mullen. Thank you, Dan Mullen. I appreciate you leaving. And you can talk about Corey Raymond going down there and all that. Hey, just remember this. Corey Raymond versus Kirby. Hmm. Corey Raymond versus Will Muschamp. Hmm. No, 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 you hey. make a good point because uh, everyone's like, well, you lost uh, Kamari Wilson to Florida. Well, he wasn't committed to Georgia. Now, he's a strong lean, and he probably told Georgia coach. He? He coming. But he had he had a year to commit. He had all year to do it. He never did. Georgia gets it. I mean, Florida gets it. Great. And he's, like you say, Shamar James had been committed to them for a long time. But at the same time, you just took three or four, well, at least three, and then one into the 2023 class uh, that you just – Snatch right away from Florida. So I think on, on the end of the day, you pretty much plucked who you wanted from not only their first class, but their second class. Uh, I'll be right. uh, you missed one. Uh, Here's the thing, dear Roddy. You know, back in high school, uh, back in uh, elementary school, Blaine and Dame were too young for that. You know, when you used to play Red Rover, Red Rover? Yeah. So they said, Red Rover, Red Rover, Kamar, Kamari, come over. I don't want to. I can't play there. I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm in Florida and play where I can play right now. Get my ass beat. <laughs> well, then you, that's a uh, – He's a good player. He's a good, he's a good player. I thought we had him, but, you know, I can't blame him either. I mean, you look at Singletary. Would you take Kamari Wilson over Singletary? No, sir. Everett? I do hey, Everett. Hey, Blaine, come on in here, Blaine. Give us a little – Introduce him, Roddy. Blaine's coming in from Blaine, North Georgia Blaine, here. Blaine Gilmer's a recruiting writer at UJ Sports. Uh, he and Jed May do a good job. Uh, they kind of they tag team the recruiting stuff. So, Blaine, let me get your overall thoughts on this class. If you'd give us your uh, – break it down for us. First, I hope my internet's okay. Do I sound okay? Because sound last night today. was a debacle. So, sorry <laughs> about that last night. But uh, I think if you're a Georgia faithful, you have to be – overly pleased with what happened in this class because if I had told you two weeks ago that you were going to get Marvin Jones, nobody would have believed it. No. Uh, so and Marvin or Jones, Ever. Yeah. Marvin Jones look, there's two there were two highs there were two defensive players that were seriously considered for the Heisman this year. What position were they? Edge I'm rusher. rusher. Mm -hmm. edge rusher those get those guys impact the game more than anybody else yes you got to have secondary members that can stop guys like jameson williams but guess what if you got an edge rusher that can get to the quarterback uh and, and tackle can't stop him the quarterback can't get the ball to that receiver like jameson williams so i think a guy like marvin jones is huge for this class um J uh, jaheem singletary is that lockdown corner that is going to be put on a, a number one receiver. That's huge for Georgia in this class. And, uh, you know, there's also some guys that are sneaky, you know, sprinkled in. Sean Washington is a player that will be versatile. He can go anywhere from – I've seen him play anywhere from a shade nose all the way out to a five technique in his career at Warren Easton. If you can play at Warren Easton, that's the same high school that uh, Van Pran is from. Um, if you can play at Warren Easton, 
you you you've got some you've got some clout. That's one reason that uh, Georgia was interested in, in to begin with is the level of competition he's played at. Trey Scott built a, a a relationship with that young man, and I asked, you know, what was it? Because Florida was coming. Speaking of Florida, they were coming really hard after Sean. Hey, what did Florida rank in Blaine? What was their rank in the SEC recruiting this year? Fourteenth is okay. what they. Is I just wanted to were. make sure everybody knew that fourteenth number in your program number one in your heart go gators uh, well, well and if, if if it were after the sec expansion i think it would be 16th right yeah so they they were they were 14th as it was a little while ago and <laughs> they may have crept past vandy here with a couple of these later ones but we'll see. hey coach you should know uh florida's behind marshall right now in in recruiting and the rivalry hey, go go herd man herd's tough they got no <laughs> coach up up there and i think billy napier's good i mean you know but that's the one thing Florida right now. If you just look at their roster, how depleted it is with the transfers and the, the lack of recruiting, what done under Mullen. I mean, they're I mean they're going to be transfer you. I guarantee you. Throughout this recruiting process, between now and February, they'll have at least fifteen, maybe twenty transfers minimal. Well, their so best receiver, gonna, their best receiver, Jacob Copeland's in the portal right now. Yeah. Well, everybody did, but I would, dis- I would disagree with you about this one term that I think it's just like, you know, people used to talk about, well, he's got buckle shoes. You know, he's really good. I don't think there's been a lockdown corner at Georgia since Champ Bailey. A lockdown corner, that is hard to say. That means that that sucker can – nobody can ever beat him. I mean, that's – I mean, maybe he is. And if he is, I'll go out there and shine his shoes every day. But lockdown corner, hmm. That's there good. hasn't been a champ. I think there were spurts. DeAndre Baker had, had a year where it was hard to beat him, but he wasn't champ by any means. Yeah, but, I mean, lockdown yeah. is good. But Blaine, you're doing a good job. What else, what else for us? What do you think happened on uh, – uh, why do you think Texas A&M got all these players beside that oil money they're putting on them? That's, uh, I, you know – that's it. And it, uh, in terms of the NIL, they're getting, they're able to do a lot of there with that at Texas A&M. And then also, uh, you know, one, one win on against Alabama on a CBS game can carry a lot of weight for a guy with a pitch, like a, like a guy who's a, a smooth talker, like a Jimbo Fisher. He's a good recruiter in his own right. And, you know, he's also yeah, good. He did a hell of a job against those three teams that had their second year coach this year too. I mean, he really <laughs> comes the shit out of them. That was great. <laughs> I like it. Coach has got the hey, I, gotta, I, gotta, I, gotta, I need to get off here. I'm too cynical tonight. But I, just, I'm just, <laughs> yeah, I, I love I, it. Keep me smart, man. I'm Kirby smart. Just yeah. go for it, man. Yeah. Call it like it is. No, we, I, we, I, we need that. We need that honesty, Coach. We absolutely do. And uh, I do want to point out that Georgia has landed five five star players in this class, and Jaheim Singletary is one of them. And, you know, the coach has been around this. Uh, he taught me a long, long time ago. And I, I remember it when I was still a photographer. He said, I go recruit the players that if you take your wife out there, she can look out on the field and immediately point out the guy you're, look, you're there to see. You know, doesn't have to know a thing about football, but you point to the one guy on the field, you go, that's the guy you're looking at. And I took that to heart. And I remember going seeing a kid up in uh, the Gwinnett area, didn't do a thing. The entire game, no big plays, but we had him ranked super high. Came to Georgia. He, well, when you call him Coach uh, Eat Ride Dress ERDs, he just ERW ER, ER, eat the pregame, go ride the stadium and warm up, and then sit on your ass the whole game. He did it for four years, and again, looked beautiful, but never did anything. But if you get Jaheim Singletary in a uh, camp, that kid is different. He he, that is a special cat. So. Uh, again, and you have a fantastic defensive back class. I'm going to touch on those guys. Uh, you also have Ja'Cory Thomas out of Orlando, 6'1", 195. Uh, Julian Humphrey, where was he committed to earlier? Florida. <laughs> he was at, He was committed to Florida. Yeah, so one of the fastest guys in the class, Julian Humphrey, a DB out of uh, Houston, Texas. He was committed Y'all have to, to stop hating on Florida so much. They just began recruiting season about a week ago. So <laughs> they're, just, they're new to this. Yeah, yeah. but they also – and then you got Dalen Everett. You know, this kid was committed to Clemson – I went back and looked at through our photos and stories of him. No one's hardly written about this guy. No one's taken any photos of him because he's been committed to Clemson so long, you know, out of uh, IMG. And a few days ago, he decommits, and now all of a sudden, he is a signee at the University of Georgia. That's uh, that ain't yep. too shabby. We We're wrote building, about him on building June. Something. We're building something out of IMG. I mean, you look at these guys, Nolan Smith and 
And these guys, I mean, that you and the word of mouth is good down there. And these guys are going to treat you right. And uh, all of a sudden, but you know, it really is interesting what happened at Clemson with Brent Venables leaving and how many guys decommitted and with at Georgia with Dan Lanning leaving and how we were able to keep this class together. I thought that was pretty salient, you know, uh, really the only guy, who, I mean, I- any way you look at it, Killebrew was a, was a signee, a committed guy, but uh, nobody else committed. Did we lose, did we? No, nobody that was he committed. He Tyree West, but the, he's been gone long before landing. Yeah, but that was not, a number. That was a numbers deal, though. I mean, good yeah. for him. I mean, uh, Florida I'm State. From the, the, the Florida State say today, how many how many guys did they lose today? I, I know. Uh, I was hoping one thing because Riley had it right, and he went out on a limb. When every I'm gonna give him some love here because everybody busts his balls all the time. But I'm just telling you right now, Riley went out on a limb about Travis Hunter several weeks ago. He also said the same thing about uh, Williams that he was going to flip. He said that Travis Hunter was going to flip, and everybody went crazy. You wrong, Roddy. You wrong. Flip. So Roddy, you're right. So I mean, doesn't make any difference. But we were in that ball game, spot, yeah. and uh, we, you know, old prime time. As this is what happened here, I'm just going to give you the phone call, okay? Because I've been practicing this. <laughs> so, hey, Coach Saban. Yeah, this is prime. Listen, you know, some of that money on the Affleck commercial. Uh, can you work out some of that for one of my players like you're doing for yours? And I, I, I mean, not, no, not that you do it, but no, no, no. you know how this NIL works. We're just getting it in Texas State. And can you help me talk to these producers where we can get some for this kid over in uh, Collins Hill? He's number 15, and he really is a good player. And I think he could, I think he could help Jackson State. So, okay, how much do I need? Uh, million five. Oh, okay. Thanks, Coach. I, I'm counting on it. Appreciate you helping me. Well, <laughs> Dane, go ahead and rip that out. Go ahead and put it on YouTube. That'll be a. No, that's not on YouTube. YouTube. That's, 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 you don't put that on there, Dane. Don't do it, buddy. It's the people <laughs> that watch this tonight. But it's so tempting. <laughs> yeah. That, so. I want to go back and touch on that. I did say he's going to flip. I said he flipped to Georgia. I got a lot of hell about it, but it, it's a bold prediction. It turned out to be half true. He did flip, and everyone said, oh, this kid's been committed there for two years. He's going to FSU. I'm like, he's not going to FSU. He's coming to Georgia, and Georgia was in it. I do want to give uh, credit to uh, Blaine and uh, everybody on the staff that did research, you know, uh, Jed and Trent and Ben and – uh, our, you know, our guys at other sites, they looked into this over and over again, and they're like, there's something here. We don't think it's going to happen, but there's definitely something here. And then we found out that Georgia was absolutely in it. I think that losing that last losing that last visit weekend would have yeah, helped hurt. Georgia. But when you roll in with $1.5 million, that everything – Coach, this is a different world now. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, it, it, I was making fun of it, but you got to give Prime a lot of t- – and Prime can do it now. I mean, he he's got the he's got that swagger. I mean, hey, he did good this year, and he talked about I'll get you to the league and all that. And it's kind of a this guy's going to be. I mean, he's a good player, and he, he's going to do well. And uh, the other thing I did, you know, sometimes when you live alone like I do, I, I got terrible sleep habits. I, I put on the the website and I, I read about what's going on. Read what Blaine's saying. Watch film. Don't lie with uh, Dane Young and Brent. I do sleep. And then <laughs> uh, last night I put put on this uh, some recruiting notes by Roddy N- N- Nabolski. I said this has got to be good. This is going to be really fun. Is this trick or treat. Roddy Nabolski talking about recruiting. Are you kidding me? I said this will keep me up. And then I saw where he said, well. More than likely, we're not going to get Wilson. We're not going to get James. We're not going to uh, – what else did you say? Because you were right, you rascal. What did you say? Yeah, I, I said that there was a toss-up with Marvin Jones because you didn't have a coach. Well, it was toss-up, and that's why we got him. We finally got him, but that was right. What was the other one? I said uh, Shamar James was, and uh, Kamari Wilson were trending towards uh, Florida, again, and they did right. I said uh, Dayon Bowie is not going to flip back to Georgia. And did did you say anything about Killebrew too or not? Oh, yeah, I said. Well, I said, yeah, Killebrew doesn't want to come play here. 
I mean, he's, he's got a torn ACL, and I don't I mean – he's a good kid. Right. We like him. So but, go ahead. You're off the show. There's nothing you can say right after all that. That's – you're off the list. So he's not going to come here, and Dayon Bowie is not going to flip, although I'm sure there were some talks there. I did want to get uh, Blaine's take on uh, – Kirby Smart mentioned that this was a down year for offensive linemen. Coach, you mentioned it too just a second ago, and uh, – Matt Luke's taking kind of a hit, like, you know, why didn't you get Elijah Elijah Pritchett? Why didn't you get these guys? But I I can't think of like three or four just absolute monster uh, offensive tackles. But Georgia got some hefty boys in there. Now, Blaine, if you give us a quick kind of breakdown on some of the uh, the beef that's coming this way. Hey, well, before, you, before you do that, I just want to interject and then he tells me, okay, this is why we didn't get them. This is why we didn't get some of these linemen. Amarius Mims, uh, uh, Broderick Jones, uh, Cedric Van Pran. I mean, I mean, just keep on saying all those guys we got in our program is the same reason why uh, Kamari Wilson didn't come. And Killer. So go ahead. I think we got some guys that are going to develop, though, don't you, Blaine? I think uh, Alu Ba is someone that's very underrated in terms of being that big and that skillful. And then also Jacob Hood is a mountain of a man. We when we were when we were there at the uh, Rivals Five Star Challenge, he he just dwarfed some of these guys like LT Overton, who's the number one you know was formerly the number one player in the twenty twenty three class. They were going up against each other, and he's just humongous. Like he just couldn't get a he's six foot eight. Uh, the guy, the guy's huge and and moves well. Bends. He can, uh, Coach Don, and he can put his foot flat on the ground when he's getting in his stance, bending in his ankle. It's not like the the heels popping up. I mean, he's got good flexion in his ankles and in his knees. He can bend. He can move. Um, and then of course, Georgia's still trying to uh trying to land Ernest Green, and I think they've got a good shot to do so. But we won't find out on that one until uh, <laughs> until the All American. Is that a check mark? Yeah. <laughs> so Ernest Green, did he get uh, Drew Bobo and uh, Scruggs? Scruggs? A double yeah, check. Griffin, Griffin double Scruggs. Check. Double check. Griffin Scruggs is a guy who's he's got to get in there and and develop yeah. uh, more strength wise. But when you talk about I watch Grayson play several times this year, he 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 competes, and that's that's all that's what you that's what you want out of offensive linemen. A guy who plays plays the game with a little bit of that nasty streak, and that is Griffin Scruggs. He plays hard. Read my lips, here. read my lips here, Dane, because I want everybody to read my lips because I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm tight with Mike Bobo because he played for me. I care about him. I know his son. And I was trying to figure out what the deal was on his son. So I called up two coaches that I have tremendous respect for, tremendous, that have no contact with me, knowing why I was asking about him, except they figured it out pretty quick. And both of them said he was a take. They said he could play center. He had good feet. He had a lot of upside. He can move. He really wants it. He's very intelligent. And that's all I needed to hear. So let's don't worry about Drew Bo Drew Bobo. He'll play. Do you really think that Kirby Smarts is in a position with all the scholarships that we get, can hand people? He's going to give a scholarship to somebody just because he's his friend. No. Not gonna happen. He's not gonna, <laughs> he's not gonna give a job to people because of that. He's gonna give them because of, it's who we, you know, he sees a vision for him. So, but I want, I want to put that stamp on the fact that, you know, I wanted to make sure that, that if I was talking to anybody about him and then I watch the tape on him, then I watch him play basketball, which y'all know I like basketball. I like basketball players. All, to figure out if a kid can move or do something. I remember when I went to see Jonas Jennings, the first thing we did was shoot foul shots. I want to see how, what kind of release he had. So, what, you know, hey, we just see if he'd compete with me, see if he could shoot free throws with me. Hey, it's just – and it was cheating too. You're not supposed to work a guy out, but we were in the gym <laughs> and having fun. But there's the point. This kid can play basketball. He's got a legacy. He's a Georgia – he grew up with – like, yeah. this is a lifelong dream. Hey, come, come on. Down. I have coached against that bugger. I can tell you, he's he's a badass. I will. He threw my son around a couple of times. So and uh, hey, Coach Don, uh, you'll you'll like this. Uh, speaking of Florida, seven minutes ago, Emory Jones enters the transfer portal for for Florida now. So Emory, uh, there's a well, that's good. Uh, somebody will be a good quarterback. Maybe Auburn can take him. I don't. know. 
I don't. I, you know I the thing today to kill me is that Paul Feinbaum had Brian Harson on there today talking about what a great recruiting year they were having. Rip. Okay. Well, they, they did go from forty first to fifteenth. Well, I guess they did then. I guess they did. One one potential, I guess, murmur from one of these things. If Tank Bigsby, he's told Auburn he's coming back. He does this every year. We'll see. If he were to enter the transfer portal at some point, one of his best friends is Emory Jones. So that's one less sticking point uh, to go down to Gainesville, which uh, – he's not, he's not going to – you're talking about Tank Bigsby? I'm talking about Tank Bigsby. Tank's out of the portal now, and he's back at Auburn. He he's never playing. officially entered. He's playing uh, hokey pokey with it. But it's still Tank Bigsby. And so this time of year, until I see him play another game for someone, I'm going to assume there's always a shot. Hey, I'm just going to tell you, that kid's going to get some good NIL stuff from somebody. Yellow to come, fella. To come play for him because he's a player. He's got tape. Yeah. You can see what he can make the pile move. He's fast. He's 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 going to go somewhere and be a, be a stud. Yeah, you should get the uh, U.S. Army to sponsor him with the NIL thing. You know? U.S. Uh, Army? Yeah. Be out there, one of those tank guys. I'd love it. I want to say <laughs> thank you to uh, Llama1028 for the super chat. Uh, Blaine, we have Jed here in yep. the uh, back wings. We're going to bring him in. Uh, but do want to give you the opportunity to make a plug for uh, your recruiting show that's on the same channel. I think most people probably cross over with the audience, but want to give you that shot anyway. Yeah, uh, rumors versus facts. Uh, we do it usually. Typically, it's been on different nights here for a couple of weeks for things, but Monday nights, 8 15. Uh, join us live here on the YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you get notified anytime we go live. Hey, you got Jed coming on. You want me to drop off and let these two gurus be on there or what? No, no. Oh, no. I'm You're I'm good. heading out. I got some kids to go take care yeah. of. So. No, we can't have Blaine on here too long. It's too much FaceTime for him. I, I don't like it. Yeah, thank before you. Before uh, we'll drop uh, Blaine out there, if you would, I'm going to bring on our uh, uh, one of our sponsors here, Dead Soxie. Uh, they are a great sponsor of this podcast. They're a great sponsor of our website, and we appreciate having them around. And I know a lot of people think that they missed out on the Cyber Monday deal, the uh, uh, Black Friday deals. There's still something going on with our friends over at Dead Soxie. They have a 20%, 30% off, and 40% off tiered discount program they're doing with free shipping. So if you spend uh, uh, any uh, 60 bucks, you get $20 off. Uh, spend uh, 120 bucks, you get, you know, uh, up to uh, over 120, you get 30% off. Spend over 240 bucks, you get 40% off. So they have some really big deals and you get the free mesh bag with that stuff. So just go to deadsoxy.com. You can see it right there on the site, on the page. It is a, uh, they have great stuff, and they also have uh, a lot of their. Uh, I always like to show them the college stuff. So if, you, if I know we this is a Georgia centric show, but if you have friends or into uh, LSU or Ole Miss or uh, uh, South Carolina, Texas, any of those, grab some of the socks for those college fans in your office, in your uh, uh, family. Try them out. Our friends at Dead Socks. And also want to mention our friends over at uh, Your Pie. I know a lot of people are doing the, uh, they're getting ready to make a really big Christmas meal. You can't always eat that heavy. So when you get a chance, join in our friends over at Your Pie, get a custom pizza, get uh, the, the sandwiches that they do, get the salads they make, the custom pastas, the gelato, that stuff is fantastic. Uh, they even have brownies in there. You can go sit down and have some nice beer. They do a lot of local beers. So, uh, Especially if you can order on a Tuesday, use the app and get double points. You'll get free breadsticks really quickly, free pizzas, free sandwiches. They that those numbers add up really fast from our friends over at Your Pie. Check them out. Also, they are huge, huge Georgia alums and big fans of the program. I mean, big fans of the school. They also like the program, or they wouldn't have been advertising with us for six years. So, uh, shout out to Drew and Natalie French over at Your Pie. Right, we got Jed May on us uh, with us. Jed, give us your thoughts going through your first real uh, signing day. Yeah, it's it's been it's been fun. Um, Roddy, we talked about this last night um, or yesterday afternoon that you know how early signing day goes can kind of cloud people's perception of how the the overall class is. And you look at yes. today, you know, Georgia missed on missed on Shamar James, missed on Kamari Wilson, whatever. You look at this class; it's still, I think, sitting at number two 
um, in our rankings right now or three. I mean, this is one of the top classes. Number one. I mean, excuse me, it's number, number two, but just by a fraction. Um, so point is, this is still a really good class. Obviously, you know, would Kirby Smart and them guys like to have added Kamari Wilson, Shamar James? Yes, obviously. But this is still a huge class. Marvin Jones, you know, I think you could debate this, I guess, with Kamari Wilson. But if you're going to have one, if Kirby Smart and them could have chosen one guy to commit today, I think they maybe would have chosen Marvin Jones just because he's such, like Lane was saying a minute ago, those edge rushing guys affect the game in a way that that few other positions do, especially on defense. So it's a great class, and overall it's it's just – it's another great class. And the signing day didn't necessarily go, um, you know, how a lot of fans would have hoped, but uh, don't let that cloud your perception of what's another great class for Kirby Smart. One thing I wanted to ask you, Jed, because uh, I've enjoyed so much your uh, – interpersonal relationships or interviews with these guys and your ability to go out and uh, talk to these kids on the road. Uh, and I was mentioning to our uh, fans about the kind of caliber of kids that we got coming in. Just say something about what, don't you feel like we got a lot of classy kids coming in here? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, these kids, a lot of these kids that I talked to, I mean, they're really good um, kids. I mean, Gunnar Stockton, that's, not necessarily especially, but because, you know, I, like Roddy said, I started this job in June. I hadn't really met any of these guys and Gunnar Stockton, you know, he hadn't gone to camps and, and he's hard to get on the phone. So I kind of thought that he was, you know, an aloof quarterback, whatever. I mean, throw whatever, throw whatever stereotypes you want out there. And I go up there and talk to him at Raven County. He's a quiet kid. He's, he's a mountain kid from Raven County. He's real quiet. He's got a, a goofy little mustache. Like he's, he's a good, he's a good kid. And I was, not surprised, but I was just like, oh, he's not a, you know, stuck up, you know, five-star quarterback at the time. So um, him, the Nylon Morissette. Um, Oscar Delp. Cole Sp- Oscar Delp, Cole Spear. Um, you know, Jaheim, Sing- Jaheim Singletary is another guy. You know, you talk to him, he's another guy. Hard to get on the phone. He doesn't, he's not very public um, with his recruitment stuff. And you're going to talk to him in Jacksonville and he's a nice kid. He, the second time I went down to watch him play, um, they beat um, – Trinity Christian, who actually just won a state championship. And there was a huge celebration for him at Riverside and in the stands and interacting with other students and celebrating stuff. And there's a lot of good guys, like you said, Coach Don, and that a lot of good. And that's what Kirby said today. You know, he was asked about several different position groups. You know, what do you look for and all that kind of stuff. And every time I think he was asked about a position group, character came up. Um, and and Malachi Starks and Jalen Walker. Oh, Malachi Starks. Yeah, I mean, those are two, two. I mean, I had a chance to meet both of those, but. The other thing is you just got to give Coach Muschamp and Coach Adai a lot of – here's two guys that weren't even in Georgia until last uh, February probably. And just their impact along – of course, you know, Kirby being a head coach that works with the secondary, just the unbelievable uh, way that they were able to go out and bring these uh, – you know, you, you flip Humphrey, you flip single – those are two five-star guys that were going to other places – and then within five months, you flipped them back to Georgia. I mean, not back, but to, to Georgia. Uh, just for everybody, that if somebody's been on a different planet and doesn't cover Singletary was going to Ohio State, the Ohio State, the script O, whatever they do, he was going there. Yeah. And he flipped to us. He was going to, and to us. And those are two guys that are going to be playing on Sunday. Those, I, I mean, Dale and Everett was a Clemson commit. Well, Everett, the same thing. I mean, is that that, uh, is that Death Valley Clemson? Yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, the team that's been in three of the last five playoffs. Yep. Is that the same team? Absolutely. The University of Clem, C L E M. That's it. <laughs> you just took one of their absolute best. Yeah. They, they added, it used to be the University of, and then he added S for chivalry, O for honor, and N for knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I give y'all two uh, two more people in this class, uh, kind of connected to this class that I really like, and I think Georgia fans will probably end up loving if they're on Twitter as much as I am. And that is Oscar Delt's mom and oh, Michael yeah. Williams' dad. Those two are going to be uh, – they're just so supportive of their kids. Is that his dad or granddad? Is On that Twitter, my I think it's his dad. 
Well, his granddad came up with him to the visit. So I'm, I'm is it like Dude, Johnson? You might know better than me. Is his John name Johnson? Johnson? Yeah. yeah, John Johnson's his dad. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay. So. I knew Brad. I knew uh, Jed would know that. But uh, <laughs> so Jed, what was? Let me just ask you this off the beat question here. What was the most harrowing thing that you had to do that our invaluable controller Roddy sent you to do? Did you ever feel you were ever in a life or death situation in recruiting or were, was there any situation that really put you where you weren't like you had to do an interview? You think you're going to get it or you went to the wrong place or just tell us the most interesting recruiting story you ever got to. All right. So I got, I got a life threatening situation one. So the, actually the first time I went to go see Jaheim Singletary play, they played at Terry Parker high school and, I don't, and in Jacksonville. I don't know anything about Jacksonville um, other than that's, where they play the Georgia Florida game for now. So I go down there and at halftime, um, I start talking to these guys um, that work or they had Terry Parker shirts on. And this one guy was like, yeah, I'm an alum. And, you know, we're trying to build a school back up to where it was and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, okay, dude, cool for you. And uh, whatever. And it's like, yeah, you know, right now we're kind of known, best known for having two people shot at a football game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh really? <laughs> he said, yeah, about four years ago uh, we had, you know, there was a fight out in the parking lot. Someone got shot about 10, 15 years ago. This little kid in a band uniform, you know, someone came up and tried to rob him and he got shot too. I was like, ah. Cool. So then I texted Roddy and I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to go right back at the hotel later uh, once I get out of here. Um, <laughs> but no, it's it's been, I mean, in all seriousness, it's been really fun just driving around at this place and going to see games. Because like where I'm from, shout out to the Madison County Red Raiders. Like it's not a huge people around here care about football, but the football program's like not great. Um, but like I went to Calhoun last week or, or two weeks ago, I guess to see Cole Spear and the whole, the place is packed and people have got the um, like cowbells, I guess, and all this kind of stuff. And I told some woman there, I was like, this is the greatest or the coolest high school football environment I've been in. And there's, I mean, you're in environments like that all year long. And on top of that, seeing really good kids play. Um, so I don't know. It's been fun. It's been a crazy year. And, you know, I appreciate all y'all for, you know, bearing with me because I don't have the, you know, I don't, I haven't been in recruiting as long as Rowdy and all these guys have, but I'm learning. Let me ask you this technical question here now. And this is for you to analyze this. This is from uh, that movie, Analyze This, uh, Billy Crystal. I'm Billy Crystal. So if you had the eyeball test on CJ Watson or Shamar James, which one would you think passes the eyeball test? I don't know. I I really I like hope you say CJ Washington. He's coming to Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Um, to it's, be not, it's not a change, but I, I just think there's a lot of difference between the way the two look right now, don't you? A little bit. I mean, I'll be completely honest with you. I haven't seen a ton of them, but I think CJ Washington is a guy we look at. Not sounding like Chris Collinsworth. It sounds like a guy. I'm um, anyway. Um, he's a guy, you know, it's kind of up in the air. Maybe could he slide outside? I'm just talking about on the hoof, just looking at him as a man. The off the ones. bus, Jed. Oh, okay. Off the, oh, off the bus. Okay. Oh, Shamar James. I, mean, I went to see him at, at Faith Academy and he was, I mean, he walked in. It was, he walked in he had, at the time. It was a Thursday, but they had a game that night over at Faith Academy and he walked in and he was, you know, filled. He had his jersey on. That looked like a dude that would light you up if you tried to, to run up the middle. So, Given that I haven't met C.J. Washington in person, I'm going to give it to Shamar James. Okay, Shamar well, James. okay, well, I, I pretty, probably shouldn't ask that question on this <laughs> show because I saw them both, and I didn't think there was any doubt about C.J. myself. But you know, uh, Cedric, if you see, we see C.J. in the weight room, he lifts with Nick Chubb. He looks yeah, like yeah. a brick. Hey, well, they yeah, got a good stuff. They got a good player. Well, don't, don't he looked at who we got more than anything. And the fact he was already there uh, th that you interviewed him. Don't you think that's what got him over to Florida? Who that's Shamar James. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's, I mean, give credit to Billy Napier. I mean, right. Because this class, Florida's class, I mean, Plain or Dane, one of y'all mentioned a minute ago, they're 14th right now. They're behind the, the, you know, they're, they're last in the sec by a lot. Um, Clark Lee's doing a great job. Clark Lee is doing a great job. I've got a lot of respect for Clark Lee. Um, but, I mean, to, for him to come in, and I put this on Twitter a little while ago, the class is is what it is right now. But for Florida to land Kamari Wilson 
and Shamar James today, two guys that A, are really good football players, and B, you keep them out of your hand, out of the hands of your top division rival. Um, that's a good day. I mean, that's about as good as today could have gone for Billy Napier and the guys. Yeah, that, that was their best case scenario. Absolutely. Absolutely. But they also lost they also lost some other name the guys that they that they had committed that we got. Humphrey, who else? You think Julian Humphrey, CJ Smith. Coach, mm -hmm. a, a wide receiver right. who runs a 10.2800 meter dash. Right. This is a guy that has Arian Smith speed. He has one of the fastest uh, 200 meter times in the state of Florida as well. So he's got one of the, he was a state 100 meter champion last year and the state 200 meter champion last year. They bring in Julian Humphrey out of Texas, who was also a secondary guy who was committed to them, who's also a track star. You pull him as well. Uh, there was a third guy, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Roddy, I wanted to ask you about Smith real fast. Right, Raymond Cottrell, 2023 guy. Right. Did you do, also do you know if Smith has any like recent injury history? I only say that because a lot of the guys for Georgia that are also like track guys, and I'm saying like into college track guys, just been some injury history. And Arian yeah, Smith just, is great. You got to type cast that thing. The, the thing that happened to Arian Smith's week, I mean, how many times did a guy get kicked and, and break his leg? <laughs> I mean, he had a stress fracture, and he wasn't really healed enough, and he got kicked, and he hurt it again. But I don't know that that's anything to do with track. But I'm not arguing with you. But there, there's sometimes those guys are a little, you know, sometimes those track guys hurts to practice. You're right. But yeah, I mean, well, no, I, I'm just like I know the instant thing is if you can get you know these guys on the field together. You just think about the speed if you have them both running go routes, one on each side. I, and I get that. But they got to get on the field together. Aaron Smith played what twenty plays in two years for Georgia. Yeah, well, he, had a, he had a knee injury, and you got to you got to say he and Milton both of that. Luck, that's for sure. He had some rough luck, but this is also a guy who he came back from that injury to run a ten ten in the SEC NCAA Truth. qualifying. So uh, it's one of the fastest times uh, to date, you know, in that entire uh, track season last year. So he's healthy. He gets a, uh, a small, a minor injury there. Gets it, it it's exacerbated with a uh, freak. We've had some freak injuries this year across the board. I mean, Darnell Washington, one of the biggest guys on the team. He gets his foot stepped on somehow or does something, breaks a bone in his foot. And then Tyke Smith, one of the smaller guys, has the exact same injury. So it's just, it's just been bad luck. So anyway, I, I, I did want to touch back on something Kirby Smart said. Uh, about because Julian Humphrey made me think of it, Coach. He was talking about this being a big secondary class, and he, I don't think he. I think if he had his way, he'd have signed thirty guys in the secondary because he absolutely needs them. We saw that was a problem when Georgia against Alabama. You just don't have the secondary guys. The guys that he brought in last year aren't quite uh, brought up to speed yet. Uh, they're not making a big an impact. But even the ones that you had here, a lot of them got hurt over the course of the season. Uh, how does this – how many would you have brought in in – because you know you, you you don't have like more than five uh, running backs. You have three or four quarterbacks. You have, what, about 15 here's, here's or 18 linemen? I mean, what do you do in the secondary? Here's, here's the thing. Not only do you have to have them for the uh, secondary, you need them for special teams. You need guys that can That's good come to and do things like that. So we basically, if you just went into our defensive back room last year and said, I want you seven guys to leave. Uh, no, I don't want you to leave. I mean, you've got to leave because we don't have, uh, for whatever reason, we lost seven guys. You know, say the fire marshal says we can't keep everybody <laughs> in the room. So you got seven guys leave that you thought were going to be able to be in that room. To the pros, to, to the portal. And you can't get those guys back overnight. Then all of a sudden, Nylon Green comes in here. He's almost ready, but he, you know, uh, then the, the kid from the Texas, uh, I really thought he was going to be ready. The kid that hurt his uh, shoulder, uh, he would have been able to help us. But, uh, but, but you got guys like Breeny and Speed and uh, Poole that have been here forever, but, you know, they've got depth and they know what to do. But, Fortunately, we were able to get Kendrick. Fortunately, uh, Keely Ringo comes around. But uh, we just don't have any depth in the secondary right now, and we don't have any. We don't have the talent level congruent to our defense that we do everywhere else on our team. We just don't have it. So uh, 
We're, we're going to have it now, though. These guys, eyeball tests. I can't wait. I hope a lot of them are, are you know, I, I heard by the grapevine there's going to be like anywhere from 12 to 15 of these guys coming in at semester. Jeez. And if we can do that, that'll help. But a lot of that has to do with who's going to leave, you know, how many of these guys are going to declare for the draft, who's going to de- do that. So you got to have – you gotta have the openings for them to come in the spring. Yeah, and that's the thing I think a lot of people are uh, missing on this recruiting class. Is you mentioned the, you know, they'll have they'll sign uh, right now. They've got twenty seven total commitments. I don't think we can count uh, uh, Killebrew in that. So say you go twenty six, uh, maybe get one more uh, in Stewart or something like that. That doesn't mean you're done. You can have up to seven. Uh, takes from the transfer portal if you've lost seven. So if you're looking at maybe 27 commitments and up to seven transfers, that's 34, 30 yeah, players. That's, 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 that's whistling Dixie, though. Know, uh, it's it's uh, a lot. I, I don't want to change over. I don't want to be the smartest guy in the room, but here's the thing that, that you've got to have. If everybody thinks about you got seven transfer guys, right? Okay. Those scholarships can't be for anybody but transfers right. to pay to count on your 85. So we got to have a transfer guy leave for us to use one of those for a transfer. Well, that's okay? my point. That's what I'm saying. You could you could have seven guys leave, and now all of a sudden you bring in seven more. So new faces to your program. Well, you can do, you can have you can do, four, you can do that, but they don't. We're, we're, they're not necessarily counting on your. Uh, I guess you you can count them on your total number, but your. You can't go over 85, though. And then mid-year, though, you can't take a mid-year guy unless you have a scholarship for him. So like that kid from Tennessee, he can't come in at mid-year. He, he, he can't graduate with the hours, you know, that he needs. Uh, Bowie wanted to come in at semester, and I don't know that we had the ability to take him at this point. You know, it was probably over with anyhow. But he was a mid-year guy. So you got some of these guys that want to sign. You say, well, hey, I'm not going to be able to take you if I can take Singletary. Or, you know what I mean? So yeah. you got to balance it out. you got to eye for an eye on numbers. So you got some. You got the fit issue there, too. You hadn't really thought about that as much. All right. Well, hey, Jed, I appreciate you stopping by. We're going to let you go here. Mr. Hey, Jed, do you want to give a quick plug for what you're doing at UGASports.com to wrap up early signing day? Yeah. Yeah. Um... Time to start working on the 23 class, right, Roddy? Um, yes. <laughs> you got leaderboard and cheat sheet will be um, forming in the next uh, couple of weeks for the 23 class. I'll have that. We'll have, you know, stories. And I'm hopefully Miami will we'll catch up with a couple of guys down there. Shamar Stewart, Marvin James, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Um, and, yeah, man, just shout out to, to, to Blaine, Trent, uh, Roddy, what you've done on the recruiting side this week, Ben, all those guys. Uh, they've done a great job this week with the, with the scoop and the inside knowledge and all that kind of stuff. So. If you, hey, if you want the knowledge, up. follow us. We'll see you kiss up. <laughs> and if hey, you Ryan. want funny names of recruits, follow me on Twitter. That's a, that was my contribution today. Ronnie, can you give me a little love? Can you give me a little love for suggesting that we have those guys on the show tonight? Yes, that, that was a good call. Hey, we have one except, more. Except the problem is we're gonna add we're gonna add Ben on here, and that's it's probably just go all to hell. So, so Ben's coming in. Yeah, yeah, we haven't been on here, here. So, sorry, Roddy. I'm not repping San Jose tonight. The Caps are playing the Blackhawks, so I gotta <sighs> rep the Capitals tonight. Hockey, hockey, yeah. Hey, then uh, we're gonna have to do go real quick because we don't have a whole lot of time left. I think, uh, but I did want to get your overall thoughts on the. Uh, you've you've heard most of the show. Uh, give us yeah. some of your thoughts on stuff we haven't touched on yet. I just think overall Georgia hit on their needs. I, I think when you look at it, like you look at Marvin Jones and saying Georgia needed an outside linebacker, and I think they they got arguably the best one in the country. They needed – there were only two guys that could fill Jordan Davis's shoes potentially, and Travis Shaw and Bear Alexander, they got Bear. So I think when you look at it, they landed a lot of, of the best players in the country at the key needs, and that's something I think is being overlooked because I know a lot of fans are going to say, like, oh, we didn't get Kamari Wilson or – oh, they didn't get that receiver, but overall you hit on most your needs. And I think you have to look at the class as a whole and say there's only three teams in the country that have a, you know, arguably the number one class, Alabama, A&M, and Georgia. All three of them are separated from every other class in the country. And when you're in that, I, I don't know why you would com- complain. I think Georgia hit it out of the park here today, even with some of the misses. 
Yeah, very succinct, very, very accurate. Uh, Coach, that is one of the issues is uh, when it comes to not getting top flight wide receivers. It's you've got some really good ones. You got some fast guys, some lighting guys, but it's just how hard is it to find that just uh, killer that, that other George Pickens? Well, I know that uh, they really are high on uh, A.D. Mitchell, the potential. And you've seen what he's done this year uh, and, and, you know, just thrown in the fire. But they, it was kind of like a, a diamond in the rough the way they got Jordan Davis in there to say, hey, and I think this kid from Houston that they got coming in now, they feel like it's better than A.D. So uh, what's his name, Ben, the kid, that, the receiver? Uh, wh- which one? The sign day, Chandler Smith out of Florida? No. Oh, the, oh, Dylan Bell. Yeah, Dylan Bell. I mean, that kid there, uh, I know Coach uh, Munkin is really high on him. So maybe he doesn't have the star power that some of these other guys do. But I, I like the way Munkin uh, – uh, first of all, I like the way he coaches him. I like the way Hankton does. And I think they've gotten better on technique. So uh, maybe we don't have quite power there as far as what we've got. But I know – that our coaches feel good about Dylan Bell even better than they did about A.D. Mitchell. So if he can be as good as A.D. Mitchell, we're in good shape. Not too shabby at all. Uh, and Coach, give me your thoughts on, on the quarterback situation with uh, Gunnar Stockton. I know you got to see him for like four minutes, but I know you've watched some of this tape. You've played quarterback. You've coached yeah. quarterback. I like, Gunner, I like Gunner's uh, – Ability to uh, just off the field when you see the way he does with his seven on seven kids and the, the way he's kind of like a Pied Piper, the way the kids follow him around. And he's got that mentality of being a coach's son, grew up around football and uh, kind of like uh, uh, Brock uh, did over there at Prince Avenue. So I think our quarterback room is going to be good. We'll see what happens. But you know, I got cut off last week when I was or because of my internet or something happened. But I, I really think that Brock Vandergriff has had a tremendous year with the scout team, and by that I mean uh, the times I go out there, he's he's trying to challenge the defense. He's working at looking at cards. He's studying other teams. He's a great athlete. He's got a big arm, and he doesn't know our offense. Beck didn't know our offense the first spring. Uh, so he's had a chance to learn it. But uh, those two guys, as freshman quarterbacks, not many people got two better ones than those two. So I'm pretty fired up about those two guys. How do you learn Georgia's – And I just don't understand the mechanisms here. How do you learn Georgia's offense when each week you are practicing someone else's offense because you're the scout team quarterback? This he's not learning it. Hours in the day. He's not – He's not learning it on the field, but he does go to the meetings and he lists, he gets all of that meeting time. And the one thing that Kirby does that I think that a lot of coaches won't do is, you know, when you go good against good, like one versus one team run or team pass and then twos go against two, he always lets the threes get five or six plays and lets one and two catch your breath a little bit. So the coaches are seeing the threes. The threes feel like the coaches are looking at him besides just being a scout team guy, and it's good for morale. So when he's been three versus three and he's doing his stuff, he's improved immensely there too. So, uh, And and Beck gets to do that too, but uh, I'm I'm happy with Brock's. Of course, I'm not the quarterback coach, but uh, he's got all the tools, both those guys do. Don't you think he did, Ben? What yeah, do you think? I think Gunner has the tool. I, I think Brock, though, long term, if you had to ask me between the two, I, I just think he has more ceiling with his mobility and his arm. But I think both guys, you you can't go wrong with either of these quarterbacks back to back years. It's hard to pull off, especially nowadays with the transfer portal. You get two really good quarterbacks back to back classes is just unheard of. I, well, I think that's an important point with the context of going with uh, Dwan Mathis and Carson Beck in comparison to what I think the potential is with Vandergriff and, and now Stockton. I think George is in a much better spot than it was, you know, even a year ago. I agree. Yeah, and you know, how it comes back and then one of those two guys, uh, you know, JT or Stetson, I mean, we're okay there. Uh, I, I know our offensive line is going to be better next year. I mean, uh, depth-wise, uh, knowledge-wise, everything, tight ends, I mean, who, who's got two tight ends like those guys? And Fitzpatrick probably going to go pro, but uh, 
And then receivers, all those young guys have come along and uh, people like to have Vlad McConkey. I can tell you that. A lot oh, yeah. of people. Hey, hey, uh, Oscar, ben, Oscar Bell. ben, I want to get you uh, out of here on this one because so we can sneak in a couple questions for Coach Don and from, from our chat. Georgia potentially losing a lot of starters on defense. I say potentially, it's almost certain uh, for next year. Of this incoming class, who are the – give me a couple names of, of guys that you think uh, that you've seen tape of that might be instant impact players. I'm not saying necessarily starters, but who can fans think from this class uh, will be a big factor in next year's defense? I think next year you have to go with Bear Alexander because he's different than all the other D linemen. I think he's a, he's going to play nose tackle, but he's not just a space eater. I think also Starks, given the need at safety, and he's as good, especially as an athlete. He can play any position in the secondary, and Kirby Smart loves his DBs more than anything. So I think Malachi Starks. Then Marvin Jones and Jalen Walker. Maybe Roddy, it's a bias here with Jalen Moore because we both interviewed him a lot. You he's, are. He's, you're he's biased. The, yeah. I mean, he's the brightest kid I've ever interviewed. I mean, yeah. he's SEC media dates. He's smart, instinctive. He, he can play anywhere. He's he's going to see the field next He's a year coach's right son. Yeah, he, he, plays I, I, I too. he plays tight end, too. Mm -hmm. I, I just – it's going to be hard to keep him off the field. So, I think those four – I think long-term, though, even though Dara Smith hasn't signed yet, he's one to keep an eye on long-term because – I think he's six six, can run a legit four four. Uh, I think like as an edge rusher, like he is as an athlete, he's not polished yet. Are you sure about that four four? <laughs> oh, I'm sure about that. He's as athletically freakish as I've seen. He's just be the polished. only guy in Georgia history that ever ran a four four at a defensive end. So I mean, I, yeah. I'm not trying to challenge you, but four four legit. I think he hey, wait, four, Cornelius four, Washington legit. and track spikes, coach. That's good. Yeah. I hope you're right. I hope you're right. <laughs> He's faster than Adam Anderson and Nolan Smith. He reminds me like Adam Anderson. He 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 to me is similar, but he's a little bit taller. He's got more frame, which which is that's great. That's great. great. Let's go for yeah, it. He wants to take three steps. He's done. He's done his forty. I love it. Hey, is, is, he, is he definitely coming here? Yeah, yeah. 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 He's just signing in February. I think it's because he's signing with his team. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good job on that, Ben. Do you want to give a plug to the vault and your work over there uh, on your way out? Yeah, so over on the vault right now, I know a lot of people have been asking about updates today on the recruit. So right now, um, everything seems quiet until the 8th with uh, Miller and Ernest Green, which I both expected Georgia if those were asking. Um, so right now, just stay tuned because we'll be starting on 2023 real soon with some updates on that. Blaine will have some stuff tomorrow, and uh, we'll, we'll have some stories on those two as it leads up in the next two weeks to the All-America game. Beautiful. Awesome. Good Thanks, job. Ben. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, I know you had some questions there, but I do want to mention uh, two of our other sponsors. I want to mention our friends over at Academia Brewing Company. Uh, they have their two times IQ. Uh, that is a fantastic beer if you are into the uh, IPAs uh, and, and an absolute award winner. It, it's a big hit. So swing by there if you want to try it. Just to let you know, they have run out of it in the past, but they have it on tap now. You can get the cans to take home with you. Of course, uh, uh, tomorrow night, December 16th, they're having a percentage night to support the cottage. Uh, the cottage is a fantastic charity that you could help out. So if you want to swing by over there on um, the 16th tomorrow and uh, get some of that beer and have a fantastic meal, that's what you get with our friends over at Academia Brewing Company. Also a great place to watch the games if you want to watch uh, any any Falcons games, any Georgia games. Nobody wants Houston. to watch the Falcons games. You hey, know they won, baby. Shut up. <laughs> so they, uh, if you want to watch those games on Sunday, or if you, hey, if it's a Sunday, and you just want to go over for the uh, beer and biscuit brunch. They have that from ten to three o'clock Saturday to Sunday. Maybe that's a better uh, use of your time on a uh, Sunday. But uh, I'm just telling you that is a fantastic brunch. It is the biscuits are great. You know, you get some really crappy biscuits out there. People say, "Oh, we haven't had biscuits," and then you can tell that they've been frozen and they just warmed them up. These guys make great biscuits. You'll absolutely enjoy them. And then, of course, uh, every Thursday they. Um, have live music and Tuesdays they have trivia. So swing by our friends at Academia Brewing Company. Go see Matt Casey out there, Georgia grad. Uh, his business is blowing up. You want to be a part of it. You want to try all the great beer and all the great food when you get the chance. And I would uh, say tell him Roddy Nabolsi sent you, but Roddy's probably already going to be there, especially if it's Sunday morning and he can drink. Well, so, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I'm giving I, up I your secrets. I, I work hard for that, you know. Uh, but I do want to share, a, I'm going to do a quick uh, screen share here because I want you guys to see this. This is really neat. Also, our friends over at um, uh, 
Athens Ford, they have, they're delivering the bikes. We're, we've been talking about this yeah. a lot. All the bikes that they offer, you know, every time you go out to Athens Ford up until yesterday, if you bought a vehicle out there, new or used, they would donate a bike to the Athens Area Humane Society. Uh, excuse me, Athens Area, which one was it? Not the Humane Society. I'm, I'm giving the dogs. I'll give them to, um, I forget, uh, Salvation Army. It's my damn mind. Excuse me. Uh, so he does. they do the Salvation Army ones. You can see they had the giant Christmas tree out there. Uh, the, the Georgia G tree with all the footballs and oh, that's all the cool. Cool stuff on it. I told folks, look, go out there and get your picture taken in front of it. You'll absolutely love it. They have delivered 140 bicycles. Wow. 140 bikes. That's just well done amazing to the Salvation Army of Athens, Georgia. So uh, just want to give those guys a shout out for what they do. It, it means a lot to us that uh, they are a sponsor of our show and they do great charity work. And plus, you know, they got Broncos. Think about it. They sold 140 vehicles. I, there's a lot of lots don't have 140 cars on there. A lot of them don't even have 14 cars on the lot. Try go go out to Chevy or Toyota right now. You are out of luck. But our friends at Athens Ford, they are loaded. Hundreds and hundreds of vehicles on the lot. You need to go see them. Brent Tucker from our Facebook page says, Coach, if you had to pick a mouthwatering recruit from this class, Ooh, good question. who would it be? And I know you could pick a ton of guys here, uh, but is there just anybody that – Immediately, if it's a get off the bus guy, if it's just someone that caught your eye, you can give multiple names if you want. Yeah, the only reason I say this is because I had the personal interaction with the three guys CJ Washington, uh, uh, Marlon Jones, and uh, Michael Williams. Uh, just got a chance to meet them and uh, be around them. And I'm thinking if, if I was coaching Georgia, these are three kids that I'd like to have go to class, uh, be around the rest of the student body, uh, which is okay. But the, the one thing that I'd like for them to be would be kicking the shit out of somebody <laughs> on the football field because they're going to do that, man. These guys are physical-looking guys now. And that was a bad word to use, but I think it's the only way you can do it. You just can't kick them and you're out of somebody. you got to no. kick them. So these guys are big physical looking stallions now. I mean, just make your mouth water, unbelievable stallions and just perfect. I mean, I don't, I was trying to find, I was telling when I got back, I was telling this guy about him. I said, these guys, yes, sir. And boy, I can't wait to get here. And God, wait to play for Georgia. I mean, instead of, yeah, I'm, I'm, big stud, you know, you know, you know, I mean, these, so I just want to transpose to Georgia fans that this coach that we have, he's got the ability to delineate the really good kids from the turds. And we don't have many around here. I'm just telling you, uh, you, don't, you can't, you can't win with those kind of guys. And that's why we don't have many guys leave it. They don't want to leave here because they get treated right. So, I would say all three of those guys make my mouth water till it salivates. So here's the here's the kind of class that Georgia had. We've gone one hour and three minutes, and I don't think we've even mentioned Branson Robinson. That, you're, you, you well, he makes. It, I mean, good lord, he makes it. And I, I think we got to mention a couple guys here that just did an unbelievable job. The whole staff, but uh, Dell Williams got those two backs, and then. Uh, this kid was going to Southern Cal. I mean, they changed coaches and all, but they put Dell Williams on, on Michael Williams. Uh, I mean, Del McGee, Del McGee, McGee on Michael Williams and turned his ass in a New York minute. <laughs> uh, and that was the way we needed him. I mean, he guys an unbelievable recruiter. Uh, and you talk about position recruiting and all, but I tell you, a guy behind the scenes, Todd Hartley, he was in with, with that Singletary's family and, and uh, Muschamp went down there in a dive, but uh, and uh, Dan Lanning, I mean, these guys uh, just a tremendous job on Marvin Jones. I mean, three weeks ago, we weren't even in the picture hardly, and uh, just the way we turned him around. So uh, Trey Scott on uh, Bear Alexander and, uh, you know, Hankton, uh, all these guys, Luke, uh, I mean, they just uh, – and Schumann, linebackers, those two linebackers, C.J. Washington and uh, Walker. Uh, what's his first name? Walker. Jalen Walker. 
Jalen Walker, that's another. I'm going to add him to my mouth-watering guy because he makes my mouth water maybe more than the other three. So, I mean, I could just go on how long we got. But I saw these guys in person. When you see them in person and people say, hey, boy, you know, one thing you do is overreact about recruits. I don't overreact. I promise you, I don't. It's not – that's not my style. I mean, I'm not going to give anybody their due – it's like I told Ben, I said, when's the last time? I mean, 4-4. Four, four. I mean, I hope he's right. I hope that's not just – but I don't overreact about playing. And, and you can get – you can cut me up about coaching. I've made a lot of mistakes in coaching and ain't made too many in recruiting. No, that, that's true. Uh, I, I just want to answer that. My two mouth-watering guys, was, again, love Jalen Walker, one of the best interviews that I've ever done. Went up for his commitment, uh, set a camera on him, uh, Thought it was the best seven, eight minutes interview we may have ever had at UJSports.com. And I've been doing this for a long, long time. He he is lights out, one of the one of the top kids I've ever interviewed. But we don't talk about Branson Robinson. It, it's it's almost Georgia's getting another five-star quarterback. And this is something Jed and I had mentioned because I was explaining to Jed what signing they would be like. I said, Jed, you look at that class. You got the number one class in the country right now with Georgia. If they miss on two or three of these kids tomorrow, like I think they're going to, people are going to be upset about the class. He's like, well, why? He just didn't get it. I said, it's, it's the last guy. Now, if those guys, you know, Kamari Wilson, Shamar James, Dan Bowie had committed to another team a week ago, and on Saturday or on Wednesday, you got uh, uh, Jaheim Singletary, and you got Branson Robinson, and you got uh, Marvin James, it would be considered the greatest recruiting day of all time. It's all about timing. It's all about timing. So when coach says, hey, I only worry about them long enough to pour the water through my hands, that's it. Hey, they're, 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 they're the others now. They ain't doing anything about it. But again, it's all about timing. That colors the perception of this. People are flu- worried about losing a, uh, a safety when you have the best secondary class we've probably ever seen. But mouthwatering players, give me Branson Robinson. Uh, <laughs> that kid is lights out. And Jaheim Singletary. I Arms. I can't tell you. What else you got? I want to echo a point that you made, Coach, and we can wrap really after this if we want to, about uh, Dell McGee. So when I was working in TV in Columbus, Georgia, when Dell McGee announced that he was leaving Carver to become an analyst at Auburn, I was the TV reporter that interviewed him at the basketball game at Carver that night uh, to see why he was doing it. And when I tell you that when Dell McGee walks in anywhere in Columbus – uh, it makes a difference. Like that, he is royalty in that part of the state. And I t- say this because did you see what he tweeted out when Michael Williams signed with Georgia? It was a picture of Michael on his official visit, standing beside Jarvis Jones, who also works for the team. Dell McGee's at Godfather status, y'all. His guys are getting guys. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. I mean, Jarvis. <laughs> Jarvis helps us recruit. I mean, he's. I mean, just. George he was a first round pick. Yeah, I mean, you got another question? No, I'm just saying he was a first round pick with with Jarvis Jones, um, and so that recruits in itself is that hey, look at what he did at Georgia, and look what you can do too. Absolutely. Uh, no, that's we pretty much touching all the questions. I want to be sure we talk about Branson Robinson. We could go on and on about this class. We didn't get much into Cole Spear, who I think is a solid player. Uh, there's a ton of dudes here. Yeah, that's just it. Well, when you got 27 guys on there, you can't go through all of them. It, it'd take too long. You know, uh, I mean, we didn't mention Brian, uh, Jordan Bryant James out of Murfreesboro. I've had some guys go over and watch him run. This guy put up crazy numbers. He, he, he didn't sign today, though, did he? No, he's not. He hadn't signed yet. But he's, he's going to be a part of this class. Uh, he ate up the whole state of Tennessee. Uh, <laughs> he won the state championship, didn't he? I, I think he did. He and just, then, I mean, we, we didn't talk about Carl, Carlton Madden Jr., that is a good looking player off the hook, too, coach. Yeah. I like him. Yeah. And then there's, I mean, yesterday, they, was it five o'clock in the afternoon? They're like, hey, start uh, signing day's already started. Welcome Brett Thorson out of uh, Melbourne, Australia. So, uh, from down under. What'd you do? Send Trent Smallwood to cover that? And oh, no, no, no. Back? I, coach, if somebody need to go down there, I, w- I would be willing to uh, make that trip. Yeah. You- you know, there's more out there than there's more out there than the Outback Steakhouse. You wouldn't like. It. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, I'm not going to Australia. It's it's nothing but giant poisonous spiders and snakes. I'm never going to Australia. Hey, I said Brett Thorson needs to hook up with Ryan Rankin and do some hog hunting out here. 
Well, Ryan yeah, will do it. Yeah. I don't do it with just a knife and a no shirt on. He that guy's psychotic. Hey, uh, next time y'all hear from us, we'll be previewing Georgia versus Michigan and kind of turning the page toward that. Uh, as Georgia's in the college football playoff, crazy month for the dogs. So been an are exciting. We have a show next week or not? Or, or, or when's the next? Is it next week? Uh, next week will be the twenty. Would be the twenty second. Be the twenty first. So we'll do one more next week and then we'll take off for a little bit. And then we do one prior. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, Mary, we, we'll get to wish him a Merry Christmas next week then. But uh, absolutely, that's well, good. I know you're. I know you're busy. If not, uh, I'll just uh, I'll make Dane do it by himself. No, I'm not too busy. Hey, this. Hey, listen, I got to count down to this show every week. I mean, what else am I going to do? Uh, I mean, I got nothing. I mean, I'm you ready. You answer to- all these phone calls from coaches in the NFL I'm and college asking questions. I, I've taken it. I've seen it. You remember that show we did when, oh, here's Barry Switzer calling. Let me get this for a second. <laughs> okay, yeah. No, that was just luck. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we, need to, we need to have a beep button ready for – Yeah, I do, I do think one thing that I want to make very uh, clear tonight that I want to I want to congratulate Dan Lanning on getting the uh, – oh, yeah the the job at Oregon I mean it's very difficult to get a head coaching job particularly usually when you get one it's because the team is down and they're you know you're rebuilding and everything but for him to get a job of that magnitude a team that was really in the college playoff hunt until they lost those two games to Utah uh, is just a tremendous opportunity for him and I hate it for Georgia but it also shows you the quality of guys that Kirby's bringing in here. I remember when he was hired four years ago, Daryl Dickey, uh, that I coached, uh, worked with him at Memphis, and he called me and he said, Coach, I hope you can reach out to Dan and tell him that you know me and 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 do anything you can to help him and his family. He said, he's a star. And it's pretty obvious once you're around the guy, he's just magnetic. He does a great job with the players and the coaches, uh, uh, coach. In the coaches, he blends in with Coach uh, Smart real well, and uh, you know we're going to have to replace him. But you know you just see guys like Tucker and Pittman uh, and even Beamer uh, surprised me what they did this year. But uh, that shows you the quality of guys Kirby's having on his staff, and it, it, people are looking to our staff just like they look to the Nick Taters. I mean, they go for guys that are that are winning and know the system, and uh, so can. Congratulations to Dan, and I hated that it came out like it did, and uh, really a betrayal by the guy that that uh, gave the information out. I mean, you can't blame running it, but you know you don't give information out like that when you're when you're supposed to be giving a reference to somebody to a committee or something. So I hated that happened and screwed it up for him a little bit, but it ended up okay. It showed that he was their man, but uh, it was. A, it was a great weekend for Georgia football to get it for, for Dan. I'm happy for him. Absolutely. That's quite the uh, coaching tree Kirby Smart's uh, putting together right now with uh, four head coaches out there who are uh, looking to do pretty well. Hey, and your boy Spencer Rattler is going to be in that South Carolina coach. Well, I think Spencer Rattler is a good seven-on-seven seven player. Are they going to play seven-on-seven? Seven? No, I think Georgia's going to have a few more out there. I think it'll be 11 The, on the equivalent of, yeah. <laughs> He's, I mean that. That's bad. I mean, good for Shane and, and Stogner. That tight end is going to help him. He's a good player, and Spencer's a good player. But yeah. you know, he he came came move that great, and he's a little. I mean, we'll see what happens. I think I think if they can win six games again next year. It'll be really something. I don't know that they can, but uh, yeah. they we'll see how it happens. But uh, they beat beat Florida and beat Auburn. I would have never thought that. There you go. So um, well, with that, we were going to end the show there. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I know it was a different time of the night for you folks. It's not what you normally do, but I'm glad glad to see we had so many people tune in, and it actually makes my heart uh, very happy. We'll have to do more of these in the evening, and uh, we'll look into that uh, coming here in the new year. Well, you got to stop by 8.30 because i got to play bingo over here at the rest <laughs> a little bit. Go to toppers is what you're saying. I know I know what the code is. All right. For Coach Donna and Dane Young, I'm Rodney DeBulsa. Y'all take care. We'll see you next time.